life's work, by his eloquent advocacy, by his inspiring example, His Highness provides a compelling response to those who question whether people of different creeds and cultures can successfully create a society together. Using his own faith as a point of departure, His Highness speaks always directly to the goodness in all people and shows through both his words and his actions that at root, the highest aspirations of all faiths eventually meet and that there are no divisions among us if our desire truly is to create a better world. His work has bettered the lives of people and communities around the world. The Aga Khan Development Network is an umbrella organization of agencies which are mandated to effect positive change in a staggering number of sectors, be it the environment, healthcare, education, microfinance, private sector enterprise, rural development, and the revitalization of historic cities. His Highness has established the International Aga Khan University with its Faculty of Health Sciences and Teaching Hospitals based in Karachi, as well as the University of Central Asia and the Aga Khan Academic Program. Aujourd'hui, à l'Université d'Ottawa, un établissement qui encourage ses étudiants à adopter une culture d'entraide, nous sommes particulièrement heureux de rendre honneur à un visionnaire et un philanthrope qui incarne un idéal d'engagement mondial et communautaire. It is for these reasons that in the name of the Senate of the University of Ottawa, I present to you today's recipient of the degree of Doctor of the University, His Highness the Aga Khan. Je voudrais aussi dire toute ma gratitude pour l'excellence de la coopération dont le réseau Agacan pour le développement a bénéficié de la part des membres de votre université, de votre ville et de votre pays. As you know, my, know, my own interest in the last 50 years as imam of the Ismaili community have been primarily focused on Africa, South Asia, Central Asia, and the Middle East, and on improving the quality of life for the people who live there. The more I think about this matter, the more I'm persuaded that one of the critical barriers to progress is the way in which governing processes occur. The so-called Arab Spring has brought special attention to this challenge, illustrating that it is easier to rally people in opposition to a particular government than to forge agreement about new governing processes. But while this pattern has recently been more dramatically evident, it has been a reality for a very, very long time. Arrangements that effectively balance power through a federalist approach, for example, are elusive. What is critical is that constitutional arrangements should respect inherited traditions, ensure fairness to minority communities, respond to rural as well as urban concerns, and underwrite equitable opportunity for a better life. Reconciling the global and the local, the urban and the rural, the regional and the national, is a formidable challenge, one that calls for the best of our intellectual energies and consistent fine tuning over time. There is certainly no straightforward universal formula to apply in such situations. We must not naively assume that what has worked in some parts of the Western world, for example, will also work the same way in less developed contexts. Different places, different histories require quite different approaches. I know too that this university's global effectiveness 
is reinforced by the high regard in which Canada is held as a valued international partner. In my experience, a country's standing in our contemporary world is no longer recognized by what it can achieve for itself, but by what it can do for others. In this context, Canada has truly become a great world power. Thank you.